I'm going to begin this evening in Isaiah, the uh, 62nd chapter. I am in verse 10. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Our prayer is that God would prepare the way for the refreshing waters renewal that will bring great glory to himself through Jesus. That was, uh, <clears throat> whenever you had someone very important coming, there was uh, preparation for that coming. And one of the things is that uh, there would be people sent out into the, the way that uh, that person or people were going to approach and make sure that the road was clear. Yeah. Fill in the low places yeah. and uh, maybe get stones out of the path because roads uh, aren't like they were. It, I mean, even the dirt roads were a little bit different. A lot could happen from one traveling on it to another. But now what we're praying here, it has uh, an allusion to that preparation. We're asking that God would prepare the way for the refreshing waters renewal that will bring glory, great glory to himself through Jesus. Now that preparation doubtless is going to include preparing us and enabling us in the preparations that we can see need to be done. So we know that for ourselves, it wouldn't make any difference what we did. If God wasn't in it, it would not be effectual. We're asking for a work of God here because God receives what he does. If we were to just decide what we think he would want without really having direction or or knowledge from him uh, we wouldn't be able to achieve that flesh can't do any of this it really can't it can't enable us to make the adequate preparations it can't show us what preparations need to be made it can't give us the strength to do the preparations it can't do anything so it's an order that we pray and ask the Lord and we include ourselves in, in that preparation, that we would be pre a prepared people for a prepared purpose to a prepared end, and that God would get great glory for his name through Jesus. Now, if it's the work of God, it'll glorify God. If it's not, it won't. And our desire, uh, these are th this is a high time during the year, and so we are asking even now for these preparations. Who knows what the Lord will show us in preparation for this? Who knows how he is going to open up the messages that have been selected by the, the various brethren? Who knows how he is going to have to make a way for people who have a desire to come to be here? And um, it, whether we live here and are able to attend or whether there are people who have obstacles that have been presented to her. I think of Sister Bev Bruner, who has a, an infirmity, that, that she desires that the Lord would strengthen her body for the trip and then for being able to sit in the meetings and, and have that freedom to be able to, to receive it. I think of Sister Betty, who has uh, long been kept from them, how that, uh, that her heart would be strengthened and made glad yeah. by the the fellowship of the saints and and the uh, proclaiming of God's word it's a special time of proclamation yeah. and we don't take it for granted that we ourselves would even have yeah. power to make it uh, even if everything looks clear we don't know in the spiritual realm what provisions really need to be made yeah. so um, we don't want to presume about anything these things are too important to leave to our devices or to not commit to the Lord because we're seeking his face for a great blessing at that time for ourselves, for everyone who attends, for everyone who is going to hear it through the, the various media that is distributed, uh, a blessing for the, the, for the um, congregation that has inv graciously invited us in to use their facility. 
there are a lot of things involved in this type of thing. So we want to, even as we have already uh, begun, to, to seek the Lord's face on this and ask him specifically for things. And in this, in this particular session, we want to ask him to prepare the way. Prepare the way. And God knows how to, how to, to answer that in a comprehensive manner for the refreshing waters renewal. Brother Jeremy, Sister Hannah, Sister Emma. Okay. We're going to turn next to 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 10. Therefore, I write these things being absent, lest being present I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord hath given me to edification and not to destruction. We're asking the Lord that he would empower all of the preachers and speakers at the renewal to speak with great power unto edification. Now again, this is a matter of preparation. Paul was preparing the people for, for his coming to them. He didn't want to have to come and be sharp with them because they were short of what they should be or not where they should be. He, he wanted to come and, and have that liberty of speaking unto edification and not to destruction. God gave him that power, and he wanted to be able to, to use it for the glory of God and, and for the um, joy and benefit of the people. So we're asking that God would empower all the preachers and speakers at the renewal to speak with great power unto edification. Comprehended in this, is that the people would also be able and, and be prepared to receive great edification and not require that, uh, that there be any sharpness in the tone of the preachers, but that whenever you're preaching to people who, who love God and believe the word and are eager to receive truth, it gives you a great liberty to... I mean, you can, you can give everything God's given you. You're not hindered or restricted or made heavy or burdened by the countenance of those that you've come to bless. And so we want this to be this glory to God and a mutual blessing to the hearers and the speakers so that uh, they don't have to say to, to that congregation, as was said to to a congregation in times past. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them. Yeah. Or I could not speak unto you as spiritual because you're yet carnal. We don't want any of that having to be said there. Amen. We want it to be a time when the word of God can run and have free course in Amen. us and through us. So who will lead us in that request? Sarah? Sarah? Uh, Sister Sarah, Brother Ricky, Brother Silas. All right. And then finally, brethren, Acts chapter 4 and verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And our... Our petition to the Lord is that the entirety of the renewal will be conducted in an environment of one heart and one soul. This is a very, um, I mean, it, it's, it's strange to the thinking of, sadly, to many people today. But this is what is normal in the church. We are one body we have one father we've we've partaken of one baptism we we hold one faith you know the, the, all of these things are oneness is christ divided no he is one and his body is one we be one bread and there this this oneness uh, i think of the prayer of christ in in that as recorded in that 17th chapter of john that the unity that is expressed there is astonishing. Uh, 
it, it requires faith to take hold of that kind of language. It's so high. So we're praying that the entirety of the renewal, even like before the first session begins, even when we're there setting things up and making our initial preparations, clear through whenever the last plug is pulled and the last piece of furniture is moved and the last person closes the door, the whole thing that the one of the hallmarks of our gathering together would be that it was in, it was conducted in an environment of one heart and one soul Amen. so that our lord and savior christ and god the father is what is seen we won't have this confusion of the interjection of other things but rather working in in harmony and so that they see what god is doing so that we can perceive what God is doing. No matter where we look, who we're viewing makes no difference. What they'll see is the work of God being carried out Amen. and us rejoicing in it. So who lead us in that request that the entirety of the renewal will be conducted in an environment of one heart and one soul. Sister Melissa, Sister Sydney, Brother Tony, Brother Judah. All right. Well, thank you very much, brethren. Brother Jean is going to bring us our message tonight, and Sister Bailey will come uh, following the prayers to read the sermon text for him. And Brother Robert, would you be so good as to remember Brother Jean before he comes up? 